there everyone, welcome to this clip, Bruno Luce here and today I'm going to show you how to connect the audio from a computer, an mp3 player or any kind of consumer electronic device to your PA system. Again, most of the equipment that you'll see is specific to St. George's Church but you can apply the principles in any place that you deal with audio. So follow along and I'll show you how this works. Now before we get into the practical aspects of connecting consumer electronics to the PA system, it's important to understand the principles behind what we're doing. Consumer electronics are different from normal professional equipment that we connect to the PA system in a number of ways. To begin with, Unlike a microphone, consumer electronics are typically stereo in operation. A microphone is mono, there's only one sound source. With most consumer electronics, computers, iPods, CD players, DVD players, they output two separate sound sources, a left signal and a right signal. Now, on this headphone jack, you can see that there are actually three separate connectors. There is what is called a tip, ring, and sleeve. Now, this type of plug is called a TRS plug because of that tip, ring, and sleeve. Now, consumer electronics almost always use a smaller version of this TRS connector, which is usually referred to as a mini jack. You can see one here, and as you can see, it's about half the size, but it also has three connectors. Now, in some applications in professional audio, these connectors are wired balanced. The tip is positive, the ring is negative and the sleeve is used as a common ground. In consumer electronics, these are almost always wired unbalanced. The tip is the left audio stream, the ring is the right channel, and the sleeve is a common ground for both connectors. Now it's extremely important to understand this because a lot of people try and hook these up thinking that it's only one channel. It is in fact two channels in one connector. So that's the first thing. Two channels in one connector, unbalanced. Looking at this cable should make it even clearer to see the two channels that we are referring to. Now on the left side, you have a mini jack connector and on the right side you have two what are called RCA connectors. The RCA connector is very often used in consumer electronics, most often on the back of CD players or DVD players. This makes it very clear that when you are dealing with a mini jack in a consumer audio application, it is in fact two channels. It's not one balanced channel, it's two unbalanced channels which are subsequently brought into a single connector. Now if you're in a situation where you are able to plug the audio source directly into your mixer, this is the correct type of cable to use. As you can see, it has a mini jack connector on one end which plugs into the laptop or the iPod or whatever. And on the other side, it has two unbalanced connectors. As a result of this, you will not be combining the unbalanced audio into a single channel but you will actually use two separate channels on your mixer one for the left and one for the right now some people ask me what do I do if I've run out of channels well it's possible to use just one of the sides in other words 
you choose the left or right side depending on which one sounds better. But because most songs nowadays are actually mixed and released in stereo, it is best to connect this in stereo if at all possible. So you plug this connector into one channel which you then pan left and you plug this connector into another channel which you then pan right and then everything will sound correct. An alternative is to use a stereo channel which accepts left and right signals and then you can control them with a single fader. But whatever you do, do not use this type of adapter to combine left and right into one channel. It will not sound correct. Now what if you're in a situation where you cannot plug the audio source directly into the mixer? A good example of this is where the laptop or iPod is at the front of the church because it needs to be and you the sound operator are at the back. In situations like this you need to use a DI box that is designed specifically for computer audio. This is one of them. This is a Whirlwind PCDI which we're very privileged to have and as I'll show you it actually contains connections specific to consumer audio and it's designed to safely bring unbalanced audio into the PA system and have it sound correct. On the left side of the unit or on one end you'll see the connections. Now right at the top you have a mini jack connector which allows you to plug an iPod or a computer directly into this. In order to do this you'll need a cable which has a mini jack connector on either end. This is the cable which we have got specifically for this DI box. As you can see it has a mini jack connector on both ends. One side plugs into the computer and the other side plugs into the DI box. Now as you can see the cable is extremely short. The reason for this is that as with all unbalanced audio you don't want to run it more than a few meters at maximum because it's extremely susceptible to dimmer noise, lighting noise and that kind of thing and once that gets into your audio you can't get rid of it. So keep these unbalanced cables as short as possible. Now below the mini jack connector you have two sets of RCA connectors. Now this is not so that you can plug two CD players or two DVD players into this box. One set is an input and the other set is an output. So as you can see from the front, if you need to have the audio connected to the PA system but also available locally for some reason, this box allows you to do that. Right at the bottom you can see there are a couple of toggle switches. Now these are pad switches. As you can see on the front, it says they're 20 dB pad. You would engage these if you had distortion with them in the unengaged position. But in practice, we find we almost never have to engage these because it is a passive DI box and therefore it uses transformers and transformers can usually handle quite high signal levels before they distort. But if you find you're getting distortion, simply engage them and the distortion should go away. On the other side of the box you can see you have two XLR connectors. Now the reason for this as I explained earlier is that consumer audio is two channels in one connector. Therefore once you connect it to your PA system you have two separate channels to deal with. A left channel, white and a right channel which is red. There are also two toggle switches in the middle and these cause a considerable amount of confusion. Now as you can see on the front of the DI, the top switch is a stereo slash mono switch and the bottom switch is a ground lift switch. 
Let me explain how these work. If this is in the stereo position, right, as you can see here, your audio will be in stereo, meaning the white connector carries the left signal and the red connector carries the left signal. If it is in the mono position, the DI box will actually sum the left and right in a resistive network and both connectors will carry the same mono signal. So that means that you can actually use this DI box as a sort of splitter. You can send one signal to your PA system for live use and you can send the other one to a recording machine or a separate location, whatever you need. The switch below that is the ground lift switch. Now, if you're getting a lot of hum and buzz, put it to the lift position. If not, you can leave it in the ground position. Now the question of course is, how do I connect the PCDI? Well, to begin with, you need to find the headphone jack on the laptop. If, like in our church, your laptop is permanently connected to a docking station, the headphone out will typically be located on the docking station itself. So what you do is, you take your mini jack to mini jack cable, plug one end into the computer, and you plug the other end into the PCDI. You would then take one or two XLR cables, depending on whether you're running stereo or mono, and connect them to the XLR outputs on the back of the DI. Now if you've lost the mini jack to mini jack cable or you can't find it, here's an alternative. As you can see, the mini jack is connected to the computer and in the PCDI, it's connected using RCA cables. This is perfectly fine uh, and in many cases it may well be preferred because the RCA connectors are a little bit more secure than the mini jack which has a tendency to pull out. One final thing that you have to remember when you are connecting a laptop is that the volume on the laptop should be set to maximum. So find your volume control and set it to maximum. This will give you the best signal to noise ratio and it will also mean that you don't have to use so much gain on the mixer which in turn helps things out. Now this next picture shows you how to connect a DVD player or CD player to the PA system using the PCDI. Now to begin with you can see that DVD players often do not have mini jack outputs. In fact, they rarely do unless they're headphone outputs. What they have is a whole series of RCA outputs on the back. Now it can be extremely difficult sometimes to determine which are the audio outputs because as you can see, there's more than one red connector. If you look carefully, you'll see that the two audio outputs are here. This is right and the white one is left. Once you've identified the connectors, you can make your connection. Now this is how it will look when it's connected up. As you can see, you need a cable which has RCA connectors on both ends, a red and a white, and you plug one end into the PCDI and you plug the other end into the DVD player. It's quite straightforward, but it's important to know which connectors to plug into. If you connect to any of the other RCA connectors, you will get either nothing or you'll get a really loud and annoying hum because the PA system is actually detecting the video signal. Once again, if you get distortion, you can engage the pad switches. If not, you can leave them unengaged. The final situation that we're going to discuss is what do you do if you don't have one of those PCDIs? Well, as we know, consumer audio is two channels of unbalanced audio. So you treat it in the same way as you would treat any unbalanced sound source. That's good news because it means that those of us who don't have a special DI can use two regular DIs. 
The thing that you have to remember is that you do need two DIs if you want to connect both the left and the right signals. If you have only one DI, you have to choose. You take either the left or the right depending on what sounds better. Once again, remember, don't use one of these adapters. A lot of people will take a mini jack to RCA connector and connect it to one of these and then connect this to a single DI box. That will cause you all kinds of problems because you are taking what is essentially two channels and you are hardwiring them into a single input without using an audio mixer or a resistive network, which is what the PCDI does. So don't use these adapters to combine audio. They are fine for splitting audio, but don't use them as combiners. Okay, everyone, I hope that you found this tutorial useful on how to connect consumer audio as well as PC audio to the PA system. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please let me know and I'll try and answer them. Until then, see you in church.